Hey, second grade, welcome back to science. Glad to see everybody. I hope you all remembered to bring with you your pretzel, or if you don't have pretzel, a cracker or a uh, piece of bread would be great. And I'm going to give you a chance to take a bite right along with me. Bite of my pretzel. Mm. I actually like the ones that are, you know, shaped funny better, but it's what my wife keeps around. All right, good. Now, I'm going to wash that down. Now, why do we eat food? Of course, we eat food because it tastes good, and we eat food because if we don't eat food, we'll die. But a scientist would say that we eat food because food gives us energy. Food gives us what we need to live and to grow and to move and to think and to learn science and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so food gives us energy. Now, we've been learning about habitats, right? So let's think about energy and habitats for just for a minute, okay? Now, if you've been paying attention, and I'm sure you have, you remember that in a habitat, everything that an animal needs, food, water, air, and shelter, is part of that habitat. And the more food and water that's in a habitat, the more living things can be there. That's why rainforests have so many living things, but deserts don't have very many living things. Well, let's think about habitats for just a minute. Because when we think about habitats, we mainly focus on the animals that live there. Like everybody knows, a three-toed sloth belongs in a rainforest habitat and a camel belongs in a desert habitat. But even more than animals in a habitat, the other living things there, many, many more than the animals, would of course be the plants. Now, it's easy to ignore plants because plants just hang around and they don't do much of anything, but habitats depend on plants. And, um, and of course, in those habitats, the plants receive everything they need to. They receive their food and their water and their air and some of them receive shelter, I suppose. So now I happen to have a plant handy right here. And um, because a plant's a living thing, it needs food too, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and see if this plant wants some of my pretzel, okay? So there you go, Mr. Plant. Squinch, 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 squinch. It does not appear that he has eaten any of my pretzel. Let's try again. Maybe he's not hungry, what do you think? No? But a plant's a living thing, right? So a plant, needs energy too. But as you probably know, since you're a bright young second grader, plants don't eat. They don't have mouths, they don't have stomachs, but they still need energy. But plants get energy differently than animals do. Plants get energy directly from sunlight. And then along comes some animal who might eat that plant like a three-toed sloth or a camel. So the plant gets energy from the sun and the animal gets energy from the plant. And we have created something called a food chain. So for this lesson and my next lesson, we're gonna be learning all about these food chains. And in the, so the first lesson is the learning lesson, which I think you're gonna enjoy a lot. And then the second lesson, I'm going to try to come up with a way where you can actually build a food chain at home, and then perhaps you can take a picture of it and share it with me, okay? So I'll talk to you later and enjoy the lesson. There's a PowerPoint for you to watch and a video for you to watch, okay? So have a great day and enjoy the lesson. Bye for now.